Hello everyone. In this video we're going to talk about the canvas object. Now the canvas object is obviously more advanced than any of the other controls we've seen so far, but there have been several requests to cover it and so I'm going to do it now. To add a canvas object to your project, just drag canvas out. As you see now we've got a default interface and a canvas object. Now the canvas object is deceptively simple when you first drag it on the screen. It's black, it has almost no properties, it has very few behavior settings, and what makes the canvas object so powerful is also what makes it so complex in that everything that you do with a canvas object has to be done in a script. So before delving into the scripting side of things, let's just cover the basics. Over here you've got the width, height, x, and y coordinates of the canvas object. Now these come in handy in the scripting more than they do in the interface itself, and I'll show you that in a bit. All right, capture is common to many controls, so we're not going to talk about it right here. But touch, here we have the option to not allow any interaction, allow only a single finger at a time interaction, or add multiple fingers at a time interaction. So for now, we're just going to keep this on mono touch. Redraw, this setting means is Lemur going to draw whatever's inside of our canvas every frame or only when we use scripting to ask Lemur to refresh it. I wanted to mention these now because there are probably a couple of ways you can find yourself wondering why things aren't working and so I recommend at least while you're learning just have always and mono touch set. Alright one very important thing we need to talk about with the canvas object before getting into scripting is the coordinate system. So just jumping over here to a diagram I've made so the canvas object has its origin at the upper left of its bounding rectangle. This means that as you move from left to right, the value of x increases. And as you move from top to bottom, the value of y increases. Now you may wonder why I'm mentioning this, but later on you'll see that this can cause a little bit of confusion, especially since objects such as faders have their 0 at the bottom and have their 1 at the top. Also, if this is your first time to deal with this sort of thing, it's a good idea to start thinking in terms of how any value in here would relate to either the width or the height of the rectangle that it's in. For example, we said that x increases as we go to the right. That means the upper right coordinate is x equals 300, y equals 0. You can also think of that in terms of its relationship with the width of this entire container. At the upper right corner, x is equal to the container's width, and y is still equal to 0. Similarly, at the lower left, as y is increasing vertically, it reaches the height of the container object. So at this point, x is still 0, but y is now equal to the height. And finally, on the bottom right, x is 300 and y is 200, and of course, x is equal to the width and y is equal to the height. So if that's confusing, just take a look for a moment, try and process that, because it will definitely be useful to understand as we go through more of this material. All right, let's head back over to Lemur and continue. Since we just finished talking about the coordinate system, why don't we get something drawn on our canvas? To do that, we start by creating a new script. We can just call this script draw for now. All right, the first thing to be careful of is to set the execution mode. Now you'll notice that because this script is inside of a canvas object, you've got several new script execution options. On cursor down, on cursor move, on cursor up, and on redraw. Now since we have redraw set to always, if we choose on redraw, that means our canvas will get updated at every frame. So that's actually what we want. These other three, as you might guess, will be used on scripts that deal with handling the cursor being pressed or the, a finger touching the screen, the cursor moving or a finger moving, and a cursor letting go or a finger being let off the screen. But we'll come back to those later. For now, let's choose on redraw. Now, there are technically two different ways to draw things to the canvas. The simplest and easiest way is using the what are called fast drawing functions. Those simply throw some pixels onto the screen, but they don't store the shape that you create in any sort of variable to be able to use later. Since the fast drawing functions are the simplest, we're going to start with those. So to create a rectangle, we can use the canvas fill rect function. Now this takes five different parameters. The first is, I'm just going to write them out for now, the canvas that we want to draw to, the x and y coordinates where we want for our rectangle to begin, and then the width and the height of the rectangle that we want to draw. 
Now obviously this is still in red because we haven't put any actual values in here. So let's start filling that out. The canvas, what do we want? We want to draw on the canvas that we're in. Well in previous videos you saw that we could get the object that our script is inside of using the get object function. Let's create a new variable just called C and set it equal to get object. Now here we'll replace canvas with just a C because that now represents the object that our script is inside of. X and Y, for now, let's just use, as we saw on the diagram a while ago, the upper left corner, and let's use the width and the height. Now, how are we going to get the width and height of our canvas? Well, the width and height actually need to be extracted from the rect attribute of the canvas. So this is going to require a few more variables. First, let's get the rect. We'll create a new variable called rect. And now we're going to get the attribute called rect from our object C. You've seen this sort of thing in the past. Now what our rect object returns is actually in the form of x, y, width, and height. This isn't part of my script, I'm just demonstrating what the vector looks like. So as you saw before, vectors start by counting from 0, 1, 2, and 3. What we need to do is extract the width and the height. So this means extracting index numbers 2 and 3 out of the rect variable. We can do that by declaring two new variables, w and h, and we want to set those equal to rect2 and rect3, respectively. Now here we can just replace width and height with w and h, and get rid of our fake line of code here, and you'll see the red goes away and everything looks good. So by clicking outside of our script, it caused the canvas to refresh, and now we have our canvas filled completely with white. Okay, I know it's not much to look at, but it's a start. Okay, let's, uh, let's now intentionally create an unexpected situation and then figure out how to solve it. So let's say I wanted to draw this rectangle in a different spot. Maybe I wanted to draw it uh, starting at 50-50, and I wanted it to be 100 pixels wide and 100 pixels tall. Now when I click outside of my script, it doesn't update. And that could be very puzzling when you first start out with the canvas object. So the reason it doesn't update is that even though we've got redraw set to always, what Lemur does is it puts whatever we've put in our script on top of whatever's already here. This means we need a way to clear our canvas object before each redraw of our shapes. To do that, we use the canvas underscore clear function. You'll probably want to put that toward the beginning of your script, and definitely before any of your drawing functions. All right, now when we click outside, our canvas gets updated. If we go back and change it to 50-50, just to prove that it's working now, we can do that, and it gets redrawn. All right, just a quick recap so far. We've seen how to, as we've done in the past, get the current object that our script is inside of, how to clear the canvas before redrawing our shapes, how to extract the rect attribute from the canvas object, how to then extract the width and the height from the rect attribute of the canvas object, and then how to draw a rectangle within the canvas at a specific x and y coordinate with a specific width and height. Okay, let's get some just very simple interaction with external objects going on. Let's say we wanted to use this fader to control the size of the square that we're drawing. Well, as you know, the fader has an x variable, and that represents a value from 0 to 1, as we've seen in the past. And so we need to include that as a multiplier inside of our fill rect function. We can simply say 50 times fader.x, and here 50 times fader.x. So now, x is 0, so we're not getting a square, but as we move the fader up and down, the square is definitely changing. I like to use examples with faders because they're very simple and hopefully they get you to thinking of ways that you could use the fader to control certain components in your canvas object, even if it's just used for testing things out. Okay, next let's see how we can change the color of the square that we're drawing. So colors are actually called styles and there are two different types of styles, either solid colors or gradients. Styles can be stored in variables, whether they're 
variables that you declare within a script or variables that you create externally using this. For now, let's just create it within the script. So you can declare a variable called color, since it's going to be a solid color. And now there are actually four different ways you can specify solid colors. For grayscale values, you can just use a value from 0 representing black to 1 representing white. So 0 0.5 would represent 50% gray. If you'd like to specify an alpha channel, basically the transparency of a grayscale color, you use a vector with two values, the alpha value and the grayscale value. So this would create a white color with 50% transparency, where 0 is completely transparent and 1 is completely opaque. Let's go ahead and use this for now. We can come back to see the other types of colors in a moment. So our new function is canvas underscore set fill style. We need to specify the canvas or the path that we're going to fill. Now we haven't talked about paths yet, but just be aware that this can either be a canvas or a path as the first parameter. We'll use our canvas for now. And then the style that we want to use is called color, which we just created. This means when we click off of the script, we see that we've created a white square with 50% transparency. Let's look at the last two types of colors we can create. If we use three separate values, these now represent red, green, and blue values. In this case, we've created kind of a sky blue color. Finally, if you use four values, as you might guess, this represents an RGB color with the first parameter counting as the alpha channel. Because it's zero, you can't even see it. If we make it a 0.75, it should be almost, almost a solid color. So it's not entirely necessary that you create a separate variable. You could just put this right into the function. Instead of color, we could just put that directly into the function, and that's perfectly fine. But I wanted to show you creating a, a style variable so that you become aware that it's possible to do that in case you want to share a particular color across multiple shapes within one canvas or across multiple canvas objects using external variables. Okay, next let's look at how we can start adding a little bit of interactivity to our canvas object directly. We added interactivity earlier using the fader object, but let's get rid of the fader. And let's go back to our script, which is still referencing that fader. Let's just get rid of this reference to the fader. So for more complex interaction, you would use what are called hit regions. But for now, we're just going to do a very simple example so you can see the basic structure that an interactive canvas object takes in terms of the scripting required. So earlier, when we first looked at the execution options on our draw script, we saw that there were three new selections available. Cursor down, cursor move, and cursor up. So we'll create a few new scripts which will get triggered based on these options. You can call the script anything you like, although it makes sense to keep it meaningful. I'll call this one cursor down. Now I could just call it that, but when Lemur senses that the cursor has been pressed or a finger has touched the screen, it will send your script some very useful information. And so if you specify these specific parameters, cursor, hit, x, and y, then you'll have access to these variables. For now, the only two that we're going to use are x and y. To make it easier for our drawing function, let's go ahead and specify two new external variables, current x and current y. Now in our cursor down, function. First we want to change the execution mode to on cursor down. That'll cause lemur to automatically execute the script when the screen is touched. Now we can simply set our current x and our current y variables to the respective x and y variables passed in by lemur. Let's say current x equals x, current y equals y. As you might have guessed, x and y correspond to the coordinate local to our canvas object that the touch is taking place on. Now let's update our draw function so that it will draw the rectangle wherever we've touched, or the square in this case. Now it makes sense to have the square drawn centered based on the location of the cursor. The cursor's x location is current x, 
minus half of the width of our square. So we'll say 25. Same with the vertical coordinate, current y minus 25. And then we still want the square to be 50 pixels wide by 50 pixels tall. Now if we click outside of our script and we click, 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 wherever we click, the square gets drawn in that location. Now notice that if we click and drag, it doesn't follow our cursor, and that's obviously because we don't have a script which responds to the on cursor move execution setting. Now you notice that it kind of changed shape as I got toward the corners a while ago. That's just because the square was still being drawn centered on my cursor, but it reached the edge of the canvas object, so only part of it could fit onto the canvas. It would probably help if we filled the background of the canvas with a different color. Let's do that really quickly. So I'll say canvas set fill style C, and I'll just do a 50% gray to keep it simple for now. Now I'll create a rectangle that's the size of the canvas. Canvas fill rect C from 0, 0 to width and height. And now we have a nice background so we can see our canvas. Okay, next let's handle the case where the cursor moves. In reality, it's the same code that we need to add. Let's add a new script. Cursor move. We'll take the same uh, parameters here. Set our execution mode to on cursor move and then paste in our same variables. Now when we click and drag, the square follows our cursor. Hopefully that makes sense, but just to be clear here, when we press the screen, the cursor down function gets called. The cursor down function assigns the current touch locations, x and y coordinate, to our external variables that we created. Same with the move. It does exactly the same thing. Then our draw function takes into account our current x and current y locations, and then correctly draws our square centered on our touch location based on the numbers that we worked out earlier. Now note that these variables, current x and current y, they can be sent out by MIDI just using the standard way you'd send out any variable in lemur. So in reality, you've already got the ability to control something. One thing to be careful of though is that right now, current x and current y don't hold values between 0 and 1. We can use a monitor really quick just to see their values. Call this x monitor, y monitor, Okay, so X monitor, we want that to be equal to the canvas current X variable. We want this to be equal to the canvas current Y variable. So now as we drag this around, you can see the monitor. The monitor is tracking our location. Now notice that right now we can go outside, we can go way negative or way positive. So it's it's a bit of a mess. We haven't uh, we haven't reined any of these numbers in, or we haven't tried to stop the square at the edge of the canvas or anything like that yet. We've just got some basic, basic interaction. So I think for the very first video on the canvas object, this is probably a good place to stop. I think we've covered a lot. We've definitely covered enough to get you started. Um, play around with this. Check out the Lemur Addendum Manual, which you can find on their homepage. It's got all the details of this object. Hopefully this has been a good, helpful start, and thanks for watching.